What is up, YouTube? Uh, my friend David asked me to make a video about this endgame. I sent him this is actually an endgame puzzle on Lee Chess, which actually comes from a game. The one cool thing about Lee Chess, I mean among many, is that all the puzzles are from games played on the site. So that's where they get their puzzles. It's pretty cool. So here we have Black. Black's playing win. And uh, both sides have a minor piece. Both sides have pawns that are trying to queen. And I'll give you five seconds to think about it, or more. You, you choose if you want to pause the clock. Okay, in the game, black played here. Takes, takes, and yeah, something like this happens. White starts pushing the pawn. Yeah, this is this is all, this is exactly what happens. And you'll see the knight. The knight uh, was unable to. Unable to stop the two connected pass pawns, and white just took it, and queen first, and black resigns. So that was not the correct solution. The most obvious move, of course, and you know maybe I would play that. I'm sure I would play it if I had only a few seconds on my clock in the blitz game. But the winning move is actually right here. So all you really have to see is that white only has one, two, three squares that protect against this pawn queening. And we can, if we get the knight here, we can cover these two squares. I'm ruining my circles, not adding to them. And then if the bishop runs up here, then we can attack it with the king. So, oops. So after this move, white is nothing better than push the pawn. You attack the bishop. If he runs, if he doesn't run, if he just pushes the pawn, we're taking it with the knight. If he runs, we can attack it with the king. And he has nothing better than push the pawn again if he moves the bishop here or here, we're just taking with the knight, then moving the knight, and then promoting the pawn. So it's true that white promotes first, but black has an extra knight. You can pin that knight, but two moves. The queen here can protect the knight, but that drops the f-pawn, so... Protecting with attack is always good. You can protect with check, and now you can either take this or start moving your king in. You're not too worried about this f pawn because it's not really going anywhere anyway because it's blocked by these two pawns. Basically, you want to win both these pawns, and uh, yeah, we're not too worried about this pawn yet. It's a long way from queening, and black should win pretty easily from here. So, just to go back, um, basically, white white uh, white's bishop is bad because this pawn is blocking him, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoy these type of end game puzzles a lot. It's just very, uh, I want to say primal, I don't, I don't know. It's it's just like pure chess. In the opening, you know, you can play eight different moves and they're all good. Uh, in the middle game, you can experiment with plans, but uh, the end game, you have to be very precise. You know, when you look at engine analysis, like the numbers don't really matter anymore. The only numbers that matter is, is it either a win, a loss, or a draw, and like all end games are either winning or drawing or losing when you get down when you get down with a few enough pieces. So yeah, this is all about controlling squares. And the cool thing is it doesn't require that much calculation because you don't really have to calculate the queen in game because you know you're going to be a piece up. I mean, it's if you can see this check here, defending the knight with a check all the way from the beginning, then that's cool. But it's not necessary to see all that. So this will be my third end game video. I'm going to keep making these end game videos. I'm enjoying it. Maybe from puzzles. Maybe one of these days I'll actually crack open some of my endgame books and uh, start getting material from there. But stay tuned. Thanks for watching.